Hello, this is Haka Devine, and today we are going to be reading SCP-2094, also known as Motormouth. And I know, this one is going to be a long one, but also, as I've already heard from a video talking about someone else who cut out 90% of the story, this SCP is actually a really cool and interesting story. So if you like this video, please hit like on the video comment that, uh, and comment down below and subscribe to your channel. Now right, let's get right into this. I have number SCP-2094, Object Class Euclid. Special Containment Procedures, SCP-2094 is contained in a medium security residential chamber and Biosite 59. Standard PG class pre approved luxuries and amenities may be granted on a supervised basis as an incentive to promote cooperation in interviews and experiments. Psychotropic maintenance of SCP 2094's emotional health is presently overseen by Dr. Anderson, ES number 59 390 258. Any requests to access or alter SCP-2094, his current drug regimen, must be submitted to her in, in triplicate for review. Description. SCP-2094 is a human male of European descent, 38 years old as of a... I'm gonna go with the American end date system and say April 10th, 2014. Several tattoos depicting co in the circus motifs are present on SCP-2094's upper body. SCP- wait, no. SCP-2094 themselves is apparently e European. Okay, it's October 4th, 2014. SCP-2094 communicates in American English. Well, you just- uh, uh, you know what? Who cares? I'm not uh, editing it again. Specifically, the New York City English dialect. SCP-2094 possesses exceptional, non-anomalous annual dexterity, with particularly proficiency in juggling. Nice. SCP-2094 is the subject of a spatial anomaly originating within its oral cavity. SCP-2094's low jaw on facial mus muscles can be pulled and stretched up to 2 meters in any direction without causing any considerable pain or injury. Additionally, SCP-2094 is capable of redirecting any physical matter that enters its, its mouth into an extra-dimensional organ made of anomalously elastic intestinal tissue. There appears to be no limit to the amount of matter that SCP-2094 can store inside this space. The weight of objects carried inside the pocket has no effect on SCP-2094's overall weight. And neither causes SCP-2094 discomfort nor impairs its mobility. SCP-2094 refers to its space as its second stomach. However, research indicates that it serves no actual biological purpose. SCP-2094 was recovered in an open field near Kamifurano, Japan, along with an assortment of non-anomalous artifacts relating to group of interest 233, I mean 233, Herman's fuller is of the disquieting. SCP-2094 was discovered bound chains and locked inside a large antique trunk, bearing the words for Essie, written on top of the panel in red paint. Ow. Feel bad for him already. Recovered belongings. The following items were removed from SCP-2094's intestinal space during preliminary containment. Wooden juggling clubs of various colors. Metal lighter and several packages of cigars, 120 base accordion. I mean, 120 button base accordion. Wow, I just skipped a whole word. That's crazy. Suitcase containing two sets of clean clothes, a toothbrush, and a shaving kit. Fully functional 1962 Maserati E3500 Eku with minor interior and mechanical modifications. This is already going to be a long video, so I'm just going to look up what the heck this is, because I think... It's a car? Oh, 
Ayuk. This will be just a second. We're looking what uh, uh, this is. Oh yeah, we're, er, this is going to be e e e one of those kinds of videos. Hang on. Alright, we found it. Dude had a car in, it, in his, his second stomach. That's crazy. Burlap sack containing a number of antique wind-up toys, operational submachine gun and, and, and accompanying ammunition, circa 1959, fire-breathing torch, plastic trunk containing 45 bottles of kerosene. Okay, that last one is insane to me. Selected interview one. Interviewer is Dr. O'Sullivan. I don't know Dr. O'Sullivan. Are they the same doctor as earlier? No, that's Anderson. Okay. I think O'Sullivan might be a dude. Interviewee is SCP 2094. Interview conducted on. Okay, yeah, it's American dates. February 24th, 2006. The day after SCP 2094 entered containment. Begin log. Upon Dr. O'Sullivan entering the interview chamber. Congratulations, sir. It appears you've signed yourself a front row seat to the freak show. Lucky you. Room's a bit too clean for my taste, but hey, it's a performer that makes the stage. At least that's what a good old Gore used to say. That's what was on the interview chamber or divider. Why, Doctor, we haven't even introduced ourselves, and you're already putting up walls between us. This does not bode well for our relationship. Good evening, SCP-2094. My name is Dr. Sullivan. I'll be... feigning an Irish accent. A Sullivan, you say? Faith and... Agar, why, I'll be a Shad Rock's gentleman. I'm a wee bit Irish, too, on me ma'am side. I'll be conducting the interview this afternoon. Ah, interview you say. Gee, I've never been interviewed before. Oh, this should be fun. Does this mean I'm famous? Is this a loony bin where all these superstars eventually end up? Hey, any chance you've got Andy, Andy Kaufman and sashed away somewhere? I am not at liberty to discuss the nature of this facility. Come on now, it's obvious what this place is. You guys haven't been particularly subtle about it. The armed guards, the reinforced cells, the constant observation, the delicate crystal barrier keeping me from caressing that gorgeous face of yours. SCP-2094 gently runs the back of his hand down the reinforced glass as interview barrier. Where was I? Oh yeah, any old dog who could figure out what guy in place this is. We're at Knott's Ferry Farm, obviously. When are you guys going to face facts? You're never going to be as good as Disneyland. No, never. No matter how many special snowflakes like me you try to recruit. You seem to be in a talkative mood. Why don't you tell me about the circus of the disquieting? Oh, it's a grand place. Grand place. Lovely people. You should go sometime. Bring the family. Make a day of it. I'd very much like to see it in person. How, could I, how would I go about finding it? Doctor, doctor, doctor! You don't find the circus. The circus finds you. So you'll trudge through life, trawling through the muck of your mundane existence, drowning in pencil shavings and choking on the sterile fumes of your tidy little office. So one day, you'll realize the stale taste of paper and politics in your soul has become so overwhelming that even the most stringent of fluoride can't scrub it away. Then, just when you feel, sorry to feel like there's nothing left on this crummy planet that can make life worth living, that's when you'll start to see the balloons, the lights, the clouds, all of it there to remind you that there's still magic left in the world. Yes, I imagine that's how you would go about finding the, a circus, Monsieur Olivain. Do you know an individual at the circus with an upside down face? Ah, uh, so you know about Manny. Wait, what am I saying? Of course you know about Manny. 
You guys probably know everything from his childhood sweetheart to his shoe size. It's a very memorable Ophelia. Set up guy, good with kids, excellent performer, diligent leader, detail oriented, task specific, synergy e e efficiency, low hanging fruit, viable as said leverage. Feel free to stop me whenever you feel like it's Scully. What role does he play at the circus? Ophelia, occasionally, and I always cry. But he's usually off doing his own thing. He's a very busy upside down face man. Does a lot of important upside down face man things. Sounds like an interesting people person. Wow, I said that wrong. When did you meet him? Now you don't want to hear about all that. Would well, you rather hear my impression of of Jane Fonda? I don't know this person, so I'm just gonna read it in the same voice. Fire! Why did you save her after all the terrible things she did it for you? No, yeah, that was very good, wasn't it? I can also do a, a, a decent and Audrey a Hepburn, and my Helen Keller isn't too bad either. That seems like that would be a little bit distasteful. Please, don't be afraid to share your experiences at the circus. I understand many of the... I don't like that. Freaks were kidnapped and abused from a young age. Like, you're very far from your captors now. They can't hurt you here. Kidnapped? Abused? Who have you... Who all have you been talking to? Listen, I've been less and in, cooperative with you. It's not be... Listen, if I've been less and cooperative with you, it's not because I'm traumatized. You can put that out of your mind right now. It's because I'm not the type to sell my circus family out to the white eye coats. I know your game, Messi. I... I... You want to get all buddy buddy with me and milk me for all I'm worth? Well, tell your boys to scribble this down their clipboards. These people you've been hounding, these men and women you've been hunting down like criminals, they're saints, you hear me? They're good folks. I wasn't kidnapped, you ding bat. I ran away, and they took me in with open arms. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to insult your family. What's this? Some slight semblance of sensitivity. Have I begun to worm my way a, a, into your cold, crusty lump of a heart, doctor? Tell me, why did you run off? And there it went. So, we're playing the backstory game now, eh? Sure, I'll buy it. I was eight years old. My dad hit the road long before I was born, so I lived at home with dear old mom. A real gem of a woman, my mother. She lived an enchanted life, sitting up on, upon her mommy throne and drinking her special mommy water until her eyes rolled back in her head. She never hit me or anything, but she hated me. God, she hated me. And the feeling was mutual. Sometimes I would drink and come a mouth full of woodland creatures just as, as, as it drove her nuts. <laughs> I'd walk up to all the innocent like, smell one of those adorable... All eight year old smiles and it spit up a couple of a dozen rats onto her lap. So she was aware of your anomalous properties? What, you mean this? SCP 2094 grabs its lower lip, extends it to arm length, and lets it snap uh, back into place. Yeah, she noticed. There's a great reason I wasn't breastfed. And because I was such an odd little thing, she kept me holed up inside the house pretty much all the time. Guess she was worried I'd eat somebody. Not once it ever occurred to me to bust out and hit the world on my own, though. Back in the day, I was a pretty timid kid, believe it or not. Then one night, actually, hold on, let me get back to Udai in a second. Have you ever seen Peter Pan, the animated one? I have. Okay, good. Where was I? Oh, yeah. But then one night when my mom was asleep, he came into my room. Show up at my window and still whether it gets the stars, just like Peter Pan. He told me that freaks didn't belong being cooped up in their boxes their whole lives. He told me they belonged out in the world, sharing their gifts, making people laugh and scream and puke. He told me a place where I'd be loved by hundreds, where I'd be a star, where I'd have a real family. So I took his hand. Mummy dearest was too deep in the drink to even notice us waltzing out the front door. 
And that, dear Sully, is how I would end up running away to join the circus. Best decision of my life. Sounds like a horrible decision, but... I can see why you would think it was the best. Being visited by a stranger in the middle of the night didn't alarm you as a child? Well, his face was upside down, and so I suppose I should have been a little spooked. By the time, I was just excited to meet someone who was even weirder than I was. And you weren't treated badly at the circus. I'll tell you right now, the circus life ain't for everyone. But hey, Manning and the gang did the best they could. They put bread on their mouths and pillow on their heads. I got a whooping now and again, but what kid doesn't? It's all part of growing up. Kids who aren't abused don't get weapons. Kept me in line and met me up quickly. The folks at the surface, Ergus loved me like I was one of their own. It never made me feel like, like being a freak was anything to be hidden or ashamed of. When you're part of a circus family, you look out for one another. You just don't run around. You don't just turn around and sell your family out to the SCP Foundation. When the recovery team discovered you, you were locked in a trunk. You were left for us to find. Can you tell me why that is? Were there any problems between you and your family? Ha! <laughs> Wouldn't you like to know? Sorry, Sully. But I think I've done enough talking. You ain't getting nothing that else out of me. Not now, not never. That's fine. Thank you for your time, SAP2094. Hey, don't mention it. Anything for my number one fan. End of log. Selected to interview number two. Interviewer is still Dr. O'Sullivan. Interviewee is SCP-2094. Interview conducted eight months after SCP-2094 entered containment. Begin log. SCP-2094 is led into the interview chamber. Leslie Blindy Stones is old Doc Sullivan again! How have you been, Doc? Because I've been great! Is that a fact? Of course not, you dingus! This place is a total oh, oh shithole! What kind of hotel are you lot running anyhow? I knew I should have looked at Hilton. I'm sorry to hear that. Life in Biocide 59 might take some getting used to. Is there anything particular you're having trouble adjusting to? Well, since to you ask, the food tastes like, like like elephant guano. The bed's as hard as a rock, and the little red light on the camera keeps me up at night. And what really kill you guys to stock the bathrooms with two ply? Seriously, I've slept in prisons that were more hospitable out more hospitable than this. You know, SCP-2094, if you can provide me with some additional information on the circus, I can put in a formal request for improved- Oh, not that again! I'm not gonna dish, you hear me? You don't have to tell us anything that might compromise the safety of your family. We're not after a sense of information, necessarily. Just tell me about the circus. Acts you've performed, friends you've made, anything will work. Hmm... Anything, huh? Within reason, yes. And you'll give me junk if I spin some simple yarns for ya? That could be arranged, yes. Softer bed, better food, DVDs. Those sound like reasonable... ...a request. Adult magazines, even? Uh, I'll see what I can do. I mean, come on, you can't just, just keep someone in containment and then expect them... I'll stop myself right there. SCP-2094 Shrugs You know what? Sure. Why the hell not? I've been itching to talk to somebody anyway. Where should I start? I think... Interrupting. Never mind! 
I know where. Okay, so picture this. L lush, green grass, wide open space, blue skies above. Imagine the most perfect day possible. Anonymously perfect, you might say. All of our days are like that. Never a rain cloud to in, in sight. Now imagine candy striped tents and musicians in brightly colored outfits and balloon animals that prance through the air above you and clowns that actually succeed at being funny. Picture, if you will, the most beautiful goddamn circus you've ever dreamt of. And forget, because it's nothing compared to Herman's Fo to Herman Fuller's. Of course, it's not always what you call crowd ready. Things get and get a bit uh, chaotic at times. All right, full, di full disclosure, it's a madhouse more often than not. But by golly, when the Normans start rolling in, there's a lot of hair out of place. You can thank our great Ingmaster for that. She's phenomenal in terms of leadership skills as well as beauty. Hello, nurse. She was around when I first arrived, though. The overall look and feel of the circus hasn't really changed since the turn of the century. The people, however, change quite a bit. The SAR want to do. Take me, for example. I think I mentioned before that I wasn't always a charming portrait of confidence I am today. In the early days, I was a tenderfoot a little lad, recently departed from home, or grown by the strange and wonderful world he'd been swept up into. I mostly just stood around, staring in dumbstruck awe at everything around me. Never really talked or nothing. I was a pretty wide kid, and, a, and an adorable one from what I, I hear. So obviously, they gave me a job as a human clown car. I wrote it out. Oh, this could they do but send me on stage with a few dozen clowns ready to lurch out my gut. It wasn't the most glamorous job, but I did get some kicks out of it. <laughs> you should have seen the looks of, of, of the audience's faces when that marching band started parading out of my lips. Priceless. Let's see. After that, I learned some juggling from a guy named Scythe. Total doucheburger. But Freddy had a, with a cup with a pair of swords. I never got to handle them, of course, just balls and clubs and all that. Sight was another story entirely. I mean, you could uh, shove a shiv into every square, every inch of that guy's body and he won bad an eye. He was a real baby when it came to being sound fired up, and up going in smoke in the middle of, the sh of a show. Total spoiled sport dying like that. They had a service for him, but I was busy that day. After a while, I got more comfortable around the other folks. Sorry to assert myself. The clown stick had to end. I mean, it was fun and all, but I didn't really mesh with my newfound sense of pride. So I did the juggling thing for a while, tossing ram junk around and swallowing it at the end. Pretty low scale stuff, comparatively speaking. But I knew I'd end up getting relegated to the den of freaks if I didn't up my game. Don't get me wrong, there's, there's a ton of great folks in the den, and it's not a bad place. But it's not the big time, you know? So when I got to be a horny teenager, I thought, why not devour a woman whole? First, everyone thought it'd be it'd just be a step down from the clown thing. And then I came up with the idea to put a plan in the audience, caught him up in the, into the ring, and then swallowed him in one gulp. It was alright, I guess, and nicely provocative, but the act didn't really take off until I got Theodore in on it. In addition to being able to turn himself inside out, the, you know, Oh, had a knack for the gymnastics stuff, and we managed to make a high diving act out of it. He'd leap off a diving board, flip it, its innards outwards, and plop right into me. It was a hit, of course. Theo and I got a lot of attention after that, especially once we started dating. Turns out I found on guys just as much fun to swallow as gals. Okay. The act got stale after a while, though, and then when I broke it off with Theo, that put the final nail in its coffin. He went back to the, the den, and I was going to be following pretty quick if I didn't think of something new to do. I thought, and I thought, and brainstormed up a hurricane, but nothing would come to me. I needed a big-ticket idea, something that wouldn't be just be a hit, but would earn me legendary status.
Then one day when I was stumping an especially long string of ideas on Quincy, he told me he'd barf a swarm of bees on my face if I didn't shut my motor mouth. And then it hit me. Motor mouth! I got pretty talkative at this at point, so it was an appropriate enough title to take on. But the act that came out of it was a stroke of genius, if I do say so myself. Picture this. Two lovely assistants on either side of me. They pull my mouth out, out open good and wide. Then all of a sudden, a Chrysler comes barreling into the big top. Hits a ramp and sells down my throat. Pretty fantastic, huh? You don't look impressed. Imagine it's atrophy day. Well, just take my word for it. When I say it was pretty damn nifty. Great spectacle of value. And legitimately dangerous. I may be magic. But I doubt I, even I'd survive a fortunate face if it were to miss. I got the legend status I was looking for, of course, becoming one of the top build acts nearly overnight. Things were going swimmingly for me, and then I end up here. Way to go over oh, that, ruining my life and all. At least I'll be remembered as a star. That's nice. This still sucks, though. Gotta say, the how much stuff did that earn me? I think that was a little bit too explicit for you too. <laughs> Incident log on number one. On December 7th, 2006, SCP-2094 was found in a, in a state of extreme distress to the point of self-harm. But outside 59 caretakers were able to successfully restrain and sedate SCP-2094. The following is a transcript of statements made by SCP-2094 prior to the incident. Begin log. SCP-2094 abruptly awakens from sleep. What are you- No! No! Stop! SCP-2094 clutches the side of its head and makes pained vocalizations. Stop it! Don't! Please! I was going to! Stop! As if he leaps from his head and begins knocking in its head violently against the wall. Don't! Take! Anything! SCP-2094 loses balance and falls to the floor. It screams, It's all I have! No, Mandy, it's all I have! When SCP-2094 was taken out of its sedated state, it displayed symptoms of severe retrograde amnesia and episodic memories, specifically in memories relating to its experiences in Group of Interest 2233. Dr. O'Sullivan was issued an official reprimand for not using more immediate information extraction techniques before the incident took place, and resigned from his post as lead researcher for SCP-2094 on January 15, 2007. SCP-2094 entered a severely depressed psychological state following this incident. Dr. Anderson began an, an psychotropic treatment of SCP-2094's condition on February 3, 2007. Dr. Anison's report, number one. The following is a, message, is a message sent from Dr. Anison to Site Director Bluth on February 13, 2007. <clears throat> Hello, I am writing to you today to inform you that SCP-2094 has undergone an extreme change in personality since I was first assigned to it early last year. Before I was lively, energetic, and highly talkative, quick to engage in banter and turn a phrase. Speaking freely, it was one of the few patients I enjoyed speaking with, occasional lewd remarks notwithstanding. However, since the December incident, SCP-2094 has grown increasingly withdrawn. In addition to its depression, it has, it has developed severe anxiety and appears to be in a constant state of terror at its surroundings. Its interpersonal skills have rapidly degenerated to the point of being visibly nervous around interviewers. Even though those parents who address it by its given name for bonding purposes, SCP-2094 
has also shown a marked decrease in its interest in physical activity, including juggling, which was a pastime which it regularly engaged in with any object it could get its hands on. I know that your vision for Biocide 59 is one where anomalies are kept reasonably healthy and happy, and the success of your mental health treatment initiative continues to positively influence other humanoid containment facilities, however, I'm afraid that there's only so much I can do at this point. Attempts to treat its depression have worsened its anxiety. Attempts to treat its anxiety have worsened its depression. I have consulted with my peers on the issue. We agree that SCP-2094's unstable mental state puts riskier options out of the equation. We will, we will continue to do our best to treat SCP-2094 medicinally and through counseling, but it seems unlikely that SCP-2094 will return to its previous its position. Given your uh, commitment to SCP quality of life, I know this will come as a disappointment to you, especially after the letter you sent noting your fondness for its unconventional interview logs. I felt it was important for you to be aware of the situation given your background in the mental health field. I hope that you will not hesitate to offer any advice you may have concerning this situation. Incident Log Number 2 On March 11, 2007, SCP-2094 was found attempting to consume itself and was presumed to be a suicide attempt. Biocide 59 caretakers were able to successfully restrain and sedate SCP-2094. Dr. Anderson approved paperwork placing SCP-2094 on Level 2 Suicide Watch on March 12, 2007. Dr. Anderson's Report Number 2 the following is a message sent from Dr. Anderson to Site Director Bluth on April 15, 2014. Hello, as you are aware, I have been in charge of overseeing SCP-2094 psychiatric treatment for the past eight years. During that time, it has shown minimal and inconsistent progress continually resisting treatment and refusing to cooperate with me and my staff. However, over the past two months, I've observed a significantly degree of improvement in SCP-2094's overall condition. It's beginning to open up about its thoughts and feelings for the first time in years. It has even requested juggling clubs, which it has been granted it access to under supervision. SCP-2094 has yet to completely explain what led to its improvement in mood, but so far I've been able to gather that it has made peace with the past, forgiven and been forgiven in return, gotten back something valuable. Presumably, these statements have to do with it regaining some memories lost to its amnesia. Due to the comparative high level of cooperation SCP-2094 has shown recently, I am not pressing for further answers at this time. Although more in-depth interviews are scheduled to be conducted. Yesterday, a afternoon, SCP-2094 submitted a formal request to hold performance for the staff of Biosite 59. It is my personal recommendation that this request be granted under strictly supervised conditions. Of course, as long as SCP-2094's condition continues to show improvement, I've lowered its suicide risk level to RL1 and hope to see it at RLL by the end of the year. As you are aware, high-risk humanoids are a substantial drain on resources. Wow, that's cold. And it is my hope that we will be able to use some of the funding saved on extreme supervision for additional research. It's likely that over the course of reading this letter, the thought has crossed your mind that SCP-2094 is merely putting on an act to manipulate personnel into complying with its whims. As SCP-2094's primary caretaker for almost the entirety of the past decade, 
I can safely say that if it is, in fact, acting, then we can assume with certainty that SCP-2094 is once again as healthy as it was during its first few years of containment. Eccentric, yes, but healthy. Dr. Miranda Anderson. Wow, mental health is just an act. Fucking hell. Selected interview number three. Interviewer, Dr. Anderson. Interviewee, SCP-2094. Notes. The following is an excerpt from an interview recorded on it. May 16, 2014. Begin log. And he ate the entire thing? Yeah, the entire thing. <laughs> I thought it was my job. And then what did you do? Oh, you know, I decided to take the high road and give him a couple minutes out. Minutes time out in my gut. You didn't. I did indeed. Boy, Manny was furious. Not as furious as it was after your old new incident, of course. You're referring to the misadventure that led you that led to you ending up in the trunk, correct? I've wondered about that for a while now. Have you gotten those memories back? Yeah, I don't have everything, but I've got all the, all of that stuff. Kinda wish I could forget it. That's alright. I'm not going to press you about it if you're not ready. <laughs> I know you won't. That's why I'm gonna tell you. You really don't have to. Too late. I've made up my mind, okay? So you know how Manny saved me from my run home life? I do. Well, that's how Manny did things for a long time. He helped people. I don't think he had been in charge uh, that long before I joined. The thing is, the longer he was in power, the more he changed. It was little things at first, you know? Sniff, sniff your attitude and all that. Folks just chalked it up to the stress of keeping all of us heroes in order. But then he started bringing in these kids. He'd always run kids, of course, every once in a while. Maybe about two or three a year. That may sound like a lot of kids, but you gotta remember that the circus of disquieting isn't just a single show. It's a multifaceted entertainment extra av avaganza. There's a big top show, of course, but there's also the den of free it's a monotony of mayhem, the individual tents for special acts, not to mention all the non performance jobs. Point is, we've got a plethora of people in all sorts of places, both kids and adults. But at some point or another, many started bringing kids that were different from the ones who'd come before. I should know, I was one who usually worked with them. Many gave the usual stories, broken family, orphans, safe from the streets, stuff like that. But there was something off about them. I figured it was just a trauma or they were overwhelmed by the circus like I had been. But something still didn't feel quite right. I didn't trust my gut though. I was stupid for a long time. I fought my chair arm, played around with them, got them to warm up to the circus and forget about whatever it was that haunted them. That changed with this one kid though. Little girl. Delicate little thing. Literally. That was her whole shtick. She'd fall to pieces and put herself back together again. I was sitting with her one day trying to teach her how to juggle to juggle herself when all of a sudden she just broke down and started crying, saying she wants to go home. That's when I knew, deep in my gut, that Manny had been taking in kids. If the man with the upside down face wants you to keep quiet about something, it's no easy feat to share it. I yelled and I fought. I told him that wasn't how we did things anymore. And you know what he did? He slapped me straight across the face and told me that he was just doing what he could do to keep the circus alive. Can you believe that? Even with everything we were doing, he still thought the circus was on the verge of collapse. In hindsight, I think he might I'd have just been overly worried. Or he's hung up on Fuller's way of doing things. Either way, it's still no excuse for what he did. I couldn't stand it. I had to do something. I slashed the girl away in my mouth and snuck her off to the kaleidoscope. She was home before lunch. Manning was waiting for me when I got back. He was livid, of course. Said I betrayed him. Betrayed the circus. Betrayed the trust that was put in me. Even when I got transportation privileges. He made a huge deal out of it. 
called everyone together to watch him locking in in the trunk for you guys to find. It's kind of funny looking back on it. Now I know that I practically killed him to do it. He was so scared of losing control. He had to make an example of of me. SCP was a big bugaboo around the circus at the time. Since a big Mickey e. D. scare or had flown over. It makes sense I used that to his advantage. He had to get me out of the picture. But at least he sent me somewhere safe. <laughs> Look at me talk. You got anything to drink in here? End log. <sighs> well, that was SCP-2094. Also known as Meldermouth. That took me 40 minutes to read in its entirety. Anyway, if you like this video, please like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. I have no idea what I'm going to be doing tomorrow, so until then, goodbye!